wistfully looking in. You know, I was going to bring peace to the Middle East, guys. Also, can anybody spot me like a couple million dollars? I'm in pretty big debt. Um, anyhow, that was a weird little segment. But um, the the one thing that I will say is that like I. I couldn't help myself. I kind of like I ended up looking at Stormy Daniels uh, Twitter account, which like she doesn't have the blue check mark, which is weird to me. Like, I, I think that Twitter would be all on top of, uh, of verifying Stormy Daniels official Twitter account. But whatever, um, man, she has just become like she's turned into just a troll baiting and destroying machine on Twitter. Uh, it's really it's really entertaining because like, I mean, you know, people are just awful on the internet and uh, you know behind a mask of anonymity they're going to say the worst most horrible uh, vitriolic things and sometimes that leads into uh, Donald Trump being elected president but enough about 4chan um, PS 4chan please don't hurt me I love you um, you know in a completely platonic like just please don't hurt me I, did, I I've never even been to you okay um, anyhow well, as I was saying, yeah. So, anyhow, Stormy Daniels' Twitter account is just incredibly entertaining because she's just like, with like, wit and poise, it's just like bashing down these uh, Twitter haters. Um, it's you know pretty fantastic. Like you know they're going on about uh, how the president is a a man of honor and valor to the woman that he had an extramarital affair with. I, I just don't understand the mental gymnastics that go on there. And, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I think like, there, there have been plenty of Democratic politicians that have uh, been just as uh, gross as Donald Trump. Just They've just been a little bit less overt about it. So, so like, I'll check my biases here and say, you know, like, I, I, I can be a little bit hypocritical here. Um, just like, you know, Donald Trump represents the uh, the opposite side of what I think is the right side of history. So just i don't know it's just it's just interesting to uh to witness i guess um speaking of interesting to witness it's kind of uh interesting to know that how, about how we're all going to die i don't mean to be uh i don't mean to be too uh too reactionary or too out there with my predictions but uh yeah donald trump and kim jong-un are meeting apparently uh by may i guess um just i i mean it's been a good run world I've enjoyed it. Um, hope that you have too. Yeah, the the uh, the two most stable leaders in the world. My God. Oh, they're they're gonna meet. Apparently, um, seems to me that the a smarter thing to do would have been to, to uh, have a meeting between the president of the United States and the supreme leader of the uh, the People's Democratic of North Korea or Democratic Republic of Korea. Um, you know, having that be like a carrot. Uh, dangled when um, you know the actual proliferation of their nuclear uh, arsenal was stopped, halted for sure and dismantled and all that sort of jazz. Um, that seems to be the smarter way. But like, I mean, it's it's just funny that like, like I'm 28, right? I just I just came to the realization within like say the last five years that like there are a lot of things that I just don't know about. Uh, I you know. It's it's the classic thing when you're when you're younger, when you're in your teens and early twenties, uh, you think you know everything and you think you're invincible and blah 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 blah. blah. Um, I've come to that realization that like every adult in my entire life has said that I'm going to come to at some point, where you know you realize like oh shit I know nothing. Um, I'm not sure if that has ever occurred to Donald Trump. Like, does he genuinely think that he's going to be some peacemaker? Does he think this was, is what his legacy is going to be? Because, like, I mean, honestly, the way that I see this going is, like, like Donald Trump rocks up to Geneva or whatever and uh, has his meeting with Kim Jong-un, and he ends up calling him a really great guy and that they had a really great conversation. And you know what? Actually, keep his nukes. He made a really good, uh, really, made a really good p- pitch as to why uh, he thinks that, uh, you know, it, it, it makes sense for him to have them. And he also, also he called me the greatest leader that the world has ever seen. Um, you know, cause that's gotta be the entire game plan for, for negotiating with Trump on the world stage. Like if I'm a, if I'm a bad actor in the world, I'm just going to flatter Donald Trump. That's, that's how I'm going to get everything that I want for the next, you know, at least the next uh, three years is just, I'm just going to flatter Donald Trump in any negotiation that I want. Just call him like a great leader. Just think that he tell him that he's fantastic, and then uh, you know I'm gonna go over here and you know bomb my own people or whatever it is that I'm doing in this hypothetical where I'm a terrible tyrannic dictator. I don't know. 
I think that that's probably enough. Uh, maybe I might have broken my rule about getting into uh, no more than 10 minutes on the old Trumpster. Um, but uh, I don't know. A lot of the, a lot about a lot of that was about how I uh, am kind of the biggest Stormy Daniels fan now without ever having seen any of her, you know, her most famous work. Um, I don't know. I haven't gotten that morbidly curious yet. I might yet. I don't know. I'm not going to tell you my porn habits. Get out of here. Listen to some music and we'll come back with something else. I don't know. I'm flustered now. It's your fault, listener. So uh, the uh, the Me Too movement, I guess, has uh, started to touch professional wrestling, and uh, you know, I guess it was only really a matter of time. I mean, of course, we already had um, had the high profile situation with uh, with Enzo Amore, who's no longer a WWE employee. Um, also, Rich Swan, um, that whole mess with uh, domestic uh, domestic abuse allegations. Uh, against his uh, against his wife, um, or with his, to his wife, I guess is a better way to put it. Um, so, uh, WWE announcer, former ESPN uh, anchor Jonathan Coachman, denying claims made by a former ESPN anchor who accused him of being notorious for sexually uh, harassing women at the sports network. So, um, Adrian Lawrence, um, former ESPN uh, ESPN anchor. Um, has filed a, a sexual harassment and discrimination lawsuit against the SPN uh, that accuses the company of ignoring uh, complaints of sexual harassment in the workplace, uh, specifically against a, a sports center host, uh, John uh, uh, Buchigros. I, 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 I'm mispronouncing that. I'm sure he died. I don't get sports center here, man. It's an American product. I, I don't watch ES, ESPN. Um, so, Jonathan Coachman's not named in the lawsuit as a, uh, he's not being sued himself. Um, he's not being specifically accused of anything in particular. Uh, just that he was, you know, kind of a gross guy behind the scenes, I guess. Uh, that, uh, you know, he was sort of notorious for being kind of, uh, kind of a creep. Um, so it's kind of a weird situation in that, like, I, I, I'm somebody who believes victims who believe survivors um i i you know i yes you're innocent until proven guilty that's in a court of law in the court of public opinion uh in the court of you know whether or not i'm going to believe somebody who's making an accusation of sexual harassment or sexual assault i'm going to believe that person because the the number of times where uh, an accusation is false um is really not a uh not a big number um it's it's Far more uh, the case where legitimate claims of sexual harassment, sexual assault, sexual abuse are reported, are legitimate, and then nothing happens. Uh, then they're illegitimate, and somebody who's innocent ends up being convicted of a crime they didn't commit. Um, so Coachman is not being sued. He's being mentioned in the documents uh, by, uh, by Adrian Lawrence uh, that she's basically claiming that 
uh, her bosses were aware of Coach's inappropriate behavior towards women. It was well known and they didn't do anything about it. And just trying to point to the overall culture at ESPN uh, that, that sort of allowed and, you know, maybe not overtly encouraged, but certainly didn't discourage uh, this kind of behavior. Uh, Coach has gone on. He tweeted uh, that he's going to address this only once because I'm seething today. In 21 years of being a professional, I've never been more offended in my life. In nine years, I can count on one hand the no- amount of times I interacted with anyone other than co-anchor. Um, he went on to say, to allow someone to spread vicious lies and flat-out fabrications is not okay, and it's time someone stood up for themselves. Uh, Jamil Hill addressed this, her lie last night. I am not part of this lawsuit because I have never done anything wrong. My reputation speaks for itself, and anyone who has ever worked with me will back that up. I'm also offended that someone can dangerously throw people's names into something for the clear attempt in getting headlines. This is the only time I'll ever address this issue because I'm not part of the lawsuit. My heart goes out to anyone falsely accused of anything. Trust me, it doesn't feel good. Here's the thing, coach. Um, maybe you are, maybe, maybe you know, you're the victim of rumors and innuendo that's, you know, been permeating in a toxic work environment where, you know, you weren't the person who, you know, who you were purported to be. Let's, let's take Jonathan Coachman at his word here, that he was an absolute professional and he was just the victim of a bad reputation that he did nothing to earn. This statement is utter crap. I'm sorry. It just fucking is. You know what? Like maybe have your heart go out to the people who are actually, actually being injured in these sorts of ways, who who are actually being sexually harassed, who are actually uh, being the victims of sexual assault and sexual abuse. Okay. Maybe don't have your heart go out to people who are falsely accused in this situation. Maybe say, you know what? I didn't do anything wrong. What is being said about me is false. But the fact that, I was erroneously named in this way has meant that I've had to look at my behavior and I've had to look myself in the mirror and reexamine some of my behavior in the past. And you know what? I don't, I don't appreciate being falsely accused of something. I'm not being legally, uh, legally penalized for this, but honestly, my heart goes out to the people who are, who feel that they are in a situation where they have been sexually harassed, where they have been sexually abused. My heart goes out to those people. Maybe that should have been coaches fucking, explanation for what he did wrong or what he didn't do wrong. Maybe he should actually say, you know what? I didn't do anything wrong, but God damn, it sucks that this woman had to put up with what she alleges that she ha- had to put up with. I feel bad for her. I feel bad for myself. Sure. I'm being erroneously named in something when I didn't do anything, but God damn, do I feel bad that this situation is happening at all? I wish that women in the workplace were treated as equals. I wish that they weren't sexualized. I wish, I wish that they weren't victimized. I wish that they weren't put into a situation where they feel unsafe, unvalued, that they're nothing more than a sexual object for gross old men, gross old white men as a person of color. I should, I should be able to fucking understand that and empathize with that. Maybe that should have been coach's take on the situation, but no, instead he decides to side with people who were falsely accused. Fuck me. Like there, there's a good way and a bad way to deal with this sort of shit. If you are falsely named in something again, he's not being sued for anything. He's not being, he's not being named in the lawsuit except as an example so just come out and say, you know what? Like, that isn't me. There may have been rumors and innuendo that floated around, but that isn't me. I've got a clean record. You can you can take a look into it. Absolutely. But I'm not going to get defensive about it. I'm just going to say, this is it. And honestly, my heart goes out to the people who are victims in this situation. Absolutely. People who falsely accuse somebody of sexual assault uh, or, or of any crime, really, they're, they're, they're scum. But in the cases of sexual harassment, sexual uh, sexual abuse, there's so few of them that to to make this about people who are falsely accused of things when he's not really even accused of anything, yeah, his name's in the mud a little bit, but like, the, it's 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 not hard to clean it up if you are actually clean, especially when you're in per- position of power like Jonathan Coachman is. Anyhow, let's. Just going to take a second to center myself here. We are on the road to WrestleMania. Hopefully, 
I don't have to listen to Jonathan Coachman behind the desk at WrestleMania. Uh, just, you know what? If, if he comes out in the next, I, I will be the first on this podcast. I'll be the first to say if he comes out and actually says something uh, even uh, akin to what I just said, then you know what? I'm I'm willing to forgive. I'm willing to move on. But like, 